Hello everybody, glad you can make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to yet another Repot with me. Now it's been a pretty rough week, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've spent most of this week on my sofa because I've had really, really, really bad moon time, right? I know that might be too much information, but I've genuinely been so ill. I haven't been able to plan much content. So that is the reason for this repot today. Not only that, but I was really busy last week as well, actually, and I'm behind on that. So today I have some shop props to do. I don't have that many because honestly, I tend to do a little bit on camera because this obviously slows propagation down quite a lot for the shop. So I'm going to do the ones that I have here. I have some Dark Lord that's actually off my personal plant at home. It got way too big for the pole. So I've cut that down. I have some really pretty variegated Syngonium and I have some white and I even have this really beautiful one. Let me show you it because it's gorgeous. It's really beautiful yellow one as well. Not only that, they are bleeding everywhere. And I do have a couple more uh, philodendron jerry horn or philodendron Ecuadorian canoe. So I don't have a lot of variety, but that's not why we're here. I like to consider these videos more about chatting, to be honest, than actual potting anything. Do you know what I mean? Like as if there isn't enough plant content. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. I have Lekker off camera. It's probably noisy. I'm probably going to be leaning up and down all the time. And I have a hell of a lot of questions because you guys, you guys ask me a lot, actually. So I have a nice big notepad full of stuff to get through. So what can we start with today? A lot of people have been asking me when the shop is next opening. I will have to check, but I believe it's going to be in the next week or so. So you're seeing this on Friday, either the weekend or the early the week after. I will be having a restock on my shop. But I need you to know that I don't really give the day and the time in advance anymore. I'm doing this to essentially combat the massive influx of traffic that can happen and basically screw up everyone's orders. So you probably won't know until you know. What I normally do is I put something out on my stories on my Kaylee Allen official account on Instagram. So if you want to know about a shop restock, that's probably the best way to find out because I'm just having to do that until we get the new site under control. And to be honest, we need to make sure the new site can handle that traffic because I don't know if it can. I hope it does, otherwise it was all for nothing, but we'll see how it goes. So if you wanna know about it, just follow my Instagram stories. I don't post that often anyway, so just give them a quick click and work out if I'm talking about restock or not. So let's start with Invisalign really quickly. A few people have asked me, you know, is it painful, how it's going, all the rest. And honestly, it's not painful. It really depends, to be quite honest. I think it kind of depends on the tray and what movement is going to happen. I change my trays uh, weekly. So I put a new tray in Tuesday night and then I go all week and then I get a new tray and then I put that in the next Tuesday. Some weeks are honestly worse than others. I think last week was really bad. I mean, really bad, that sucked. I had loads of pressure on my bottom teeth. I had a couple of pressure points up here on the top teeth, but generally no, it doesn't hurt me. What I would say, rotation hurts more than movement. So if a tooth has to rotate, I find that's more painful than if a tooth simply has to move. That's just what I found. But ultimately, no, everything's absolutely fine. There's just some trays, I guess, are just worse than others, right? It just, it's just what happens. So I do still recommend it so far. I've got used to it. I'm enjoying it. I'm really happy with the progression of my teeth. I think my smile's already a lot better. Like this isn't something other people are going to notice, but when I used to smile previously, my smile would be quite like narrow, my palette would be more like this, but now it's starting to become more like this. And it means that when I smile, my smile is a lot wider. So if I smile now, it's just like, it's less gappy here, if that makes any sense. So I'm really, really happy with how it's going and I can't wait to get to the end of it and have beautiful teeth. So I'm really happy to have done it. I have no regrets. And I can't wait to see what it's like when it's finished. If I seem a bit sweaty right now, by the way, my hair is up, apologies, but it's way too hot in here. I don't know what temperature it is because I don't, I can't see a thermostat from here, but it's probably about 27 degrees. So this is, this is kind of what you get. How do I want to tackle this? Oh, favorite ice cream, someone randomly asked me, is mint ice cream. I am obsessed with mint ice cream, but it's got to be a good one. Like Ben and Jerry's do a really good mint ice cream. That is amazing. I don't like cheap mint ice cream where it tastes like really synthetic, if that makes any sense. I don't, I'm not about that. But a good mint ice cream is amazing. And Ben and Jerry's do do a great one. So that's my favorite ice cream. That's a really quick one. Uh, oh, 
favorite video game. Oh my God. No one's probably going to know this, but before I did this YouTube channel, I actually had an old YouTube channel where I played video games. I had a channel where I played video games. I studied games programming at university. And then in my free time, I also played video games. So I've played a lot of video games, but my favorite genre of game is probably, let me think about this, puzzle games, love puzzle games, adventure games, uh, horror games, and the odd FPS. I'm not as into FPS as I was. That's first person shooters, if you're not in the know. Not as much as I was. At the minute, I'm playing an amazing video game that I, I know has been out for a long time, but I just never played it. I'm playing The Witness. People might not have heard of that. I'm playing that at the minute on PS4 and I'm loving life. What have I played in the past and absolutely loved? I'm a huge Borderlands fan. L like literally, it's, it's a problem how much I like Borderlands. Not loving the third one. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm not loving the third one. Portal, amazing game. Bioshock as well. Love Bioshock. Oh my God. Mainly I'm talking about the first one though. I don't really dig infinite, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> horror games. Well, the first horror game that comes to mind is Outlast. I thought that was great. Terrifying, but great. It's hard that because I've played so many damn games. I mean, when I was a kid, my favorite games were the Tomb Raider games. Like, hands down, that was the shit. That's what I played all the time. So yeah, I have a few favorite games, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I've had to change the type of games I play in order to, like, chill out a little bit. Like, I don't get any chill from playing EG Borderlands. So I have to, like, change what I'm playing to get that like chill out effect. A lot of people ask me as well if I miss my old job and I'm going to talk about it now to be honest because it's connected to it. I do and don't, you know, I, I really miss, there's nothing more that I miss than coming into work, someone saying, look, I've got this problem. Can you make this thing do this essentially? And I'm not told how to do it because that's one thing I did love about my job. I never got told how to do it because that was up to me. And I know it is that way in a lot of software engineering stuff. But when you go to a small like indie game studio, it's even more so. So I really miss having the freedom of just kind of making what I want and doing things that way. I miss the challenge. I miss the project, I guess you could say, because I'm very big on that kind of stuff. So I miss that. Um, I don't miss the nine to five. I've got to be totally honest. Um, when I finally left university, I was happy to be earning money. Two seconds. I was happy to be earning money, but I wasn't happy about the nine to five after a few months, just because I don't, I don't like the idea of having to live your life on a weekend, right? Because you, you can't do much on a weekday after work if you're doing nine to five. It just doesn't happen. By the time you get everything done that you need to do at home and you eat and you chill out, you shower, whatever, you're done. So I didn't really like that aspect of it. People probably rightly aren't in the know about the full reasons why I left, because it wasn't just for the shop. There was other reasons as well. But long story short, I ended up not liking it as much as I used to. So I don't miss some aspects of it. Um, but there are a lot of things I do miss and it, I definitely miss the challenge. Definitely. I often get quite paranoid that if I read over like some of my old code or something, like I wouldn't understand it or I'd like forget how to do it. Um, I can't remember the last time I looked at code. I actually don't know. Long time ago. I feel like I'd know. Like sometimes I just catch myself thinking, oh, would I know how to do that if I wanted to do that? How do I do that? And I get really paranoid, which is so ridiculous. But so yeah, I do think about it more than what I thought I would. But if someone asked me, you know, would you go back tomorrow to either that company or, or any company, I would say no. I'm enjoying the level of control that I have over my life now. And that's the number one thing that I've gained. I don't work less. If anything, I work five times more than what I was working when I was working there. It's certainly not a case of being able to do what I want in that sense. It's just more I can structure my week. If I want to have three days out of every week where I absolutely hammer it and I work long days and it's really hard, but the rest of the week I get to do what the hell I want. I'm happy with that. I like the idea of one week doing that and then the next week going, well, I'm, I'm a bit tired. Let's just do it little and often this week, for example. I think that's great. Um, and that's something that's fantastic about working for yourself. Obviously, if it all fails, it's on you. But I really enjoy that aspect of what I do now, I think, compared to what I did before. Someone asked me as well, what was it? Let me get this straight, because I can't remember, obviously, all the questions. What do I have? Yeah, how is it being female in the industry? And um, I'm going to include university in that, because I think the, uni the industry kind of starts at university. So anyone that doesn't know, I studied games programming 
State University in Newcastle. And that essentially means I was taught C++ with a view to making video games. So I didn't really get taught specific software engineering principles. I got taught how to make games, which is kind of the same thing. Honestly, it is. But yeah, it was a little bit more specific than that. And I was in a class. Let me get this right. So I'm probably going to pause a lot today because I don't have a lot to plan, but we have a lot to talk about. I was in a class when I got there somewhere between 25 and 30 people. And I feel like if I've got this right, there was two, two of us, two girls. It was me and one other girl. By the end of it, by the third year, there was, I think there was 12 of us and there was only me that was there that was female. So I was, I was with an all male cast doesn't sound right. I was at university with mainly men. And I tell you something, I tell you something. I did not realize how the world treated women compared to men until I left the industry. And that's probably going to surprise a lot of people, right? Honestly, it is. It surprised me, seriously. Because... I'm going to be completely honest with you, okay? Because you know how it is on this channel. Two seconds. Oh, that's way too much liquor. One moment. I'm going to be completely honest with you. So when I was doing my university course and I was doing my job, everyone was always really nice. Honestly, no one ever treated me any differently for being female. Not one time. And I cannot stress that enough. It literally never happened. And I went through my, basically my university life and my professional life thinking that a lot of things that people say happen in the workplace um, with regards to like being discriminant against women in some way. Um, I kind of walked through life genuinely thinking, I haven't seen it. Like... I don't get it. I don't think it's a thing. Um, seriously, I, I used to think like that. And I'm saying it now because I want you to know that my opinion has changed. But it's actually changed. Get this. It has changed since I've left the tech industry. Which I know people are expecting me to say it probably the way around. But it's not. I tell you now, the most crap I've had has been since I've left that industry. And I've made it on my own as a businesswoman. Let me tell you that. I realize now, um, if I ever get the chance to somebody, I, you know, I'll say it to them. People are going to take this in two ways, what I say here. And I understand why you're going to take it in two ways. But I feel like I never gave the people that were around me in a professional sense. So both university and um, at work at my job. I feel like I never gave them the credit for treating me equally. And this is going to really um, spark some debate, probably, because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you shouldn't be giving them credit for treating you equally, right? And I get that. But what I'm saying is I feel like I took it for granted a little bit. And I know, I know this is such a hard thing to talk about, and I don't even know how it's coming out as I'm saying it. But people treat me so fairly, and I really didn't see how, not how good I had it, but just how normal my environment was for me personally compared to what I hear about a lot of people. So I don't think anyone deserves a special sticker for treating people equally. And I will get onto more of that later because I know y'all are asking me about a lot of current events, let's just say. I wish I'd been aware of how it was outside of that environment at the time um, because I wasn't. And I didn't realize how horrendous the differences can really be between essentially, anyway, men and women. Um, it's, it's not good. And I, I swear to you, I've only encountered this since I've left, since I've done plants, I've encountered this. That's really sad, really sad, but that's what's kind of gone on for me. So let me know what you think about anything I've just said. I'm not drawn on about that because it was literally just someone asking me like, how's it been for you? And, and my answer is, well, it's been fine, but I realized that it, I had a really unique situation going on because that's not what I hear and not what I see and not how I'm treated now. So I found that quite interesting and I've done a lot of thinking about it recently actually.
Oh, well, why not? Uh, what inspired the shop? What was it like as a woman? Did you have a business plan? We'll just tackle that really quickly. There's not a lot more to say on it because I've kind of covered it. To start the shop as a woman, that's not applicable for me personally. I was still in my current job anyway when I started it. It's a really hard question to answer as to whether I had support or not. I didn't have many people around me anyway. Um, I'd moved to Manchester for the job that I later quit, right? So I didn't really have friends down there. I didn't really have friends up north, um, complications with an ex, and I didn't have many people to tell, I guess. I didn't have many friends, I didn't have YouTube friends yet, like people like Pam, any of the Pams actually, I'm good friends with all three of them. Uh, I didn't really have anyone, so it's hard to say whether I was fully supported or not. There was definitely resistance, ah, that's probably a harsh word actually, there was scepticism from people within my inner circle, I think. Um, there isn't now, obviously, but that didn't bother me too much, I don't think, because I've been around a few different people in my life that have told me I can't do things. Um, so that didn't really affect me too much, but that's how it was on the support side of it anyway. Business plan, I didn't have one. I know you're supposed to have one, and believe me, I've been, I've studied business a lot, uh, and I know you're supposed to have one. I didn't have one. I guess I didn't have one just because I don't know, it seemed simple to me. That's probably a, not a good advice, so I do recommend you do a business plan if you're going to start a shop. I'm guessing that's why people are asking me. Um, definitely do a business plan, by the way, if you're starting a shop in these current times, because it's rough as hell. Trust me, prices are up, importing and exporting is rough, people are um, generally, a lot of people have like an angrier attitude towards prices and what they can get and what they can't get as a customer base. So you have that to deal with and I will get onto that. So do a business plan. Honestly, don't do what I did, even though my, my, my pathway was quite smooth and it was quite smooth because, and somebody else asked me this as well, like, where did you get the idea from? How, how did you end up opening a shop? And I don't know how many people watching this are new and how many people have, you know, been with me since the beginning, but I came up with the idea for a rare plant shop of the rare plant shop because I've always liked things that you can't always find, right? That for me in many cases is stuff that I like, whether it's, I don't know, I can't even think now, a rare video game, a rare product that was made, uh, you know, only so many of them were made. It's not, it, it's just something that I'm very attracted to for some reason. So obviously that manifested itself into plants, right? When I played video games on my old channel that is now gone, I, always tried to find the video games that no one else was playing and I prided myself on finding like really oddball games that no one had heard of and I loved doing that, it was great. Same thing when I watch movies. I like to find movies, say horror movies, that people haven't really heard of, that it's just not mainstream. I love that kind of thing and I think it just manifested itself into plants, right? So if you look back at my channel, I did my first Rare Plant Index before I opened the shop and I, I did the Rare Plant Index and I thought all these plants Okay, cool. Here's a list of all these plants. What's, you know, common, what isn't. And when I did this Rare Plant Index video, before I filmed it, but definitely when I watched it back and I was editing and I was listening to what I was saying, I'd realized that I'd, I'd almost done the market research, right? Before this Rare Plant Index. And I was like, oh, you can't really get half of these. And that was the point of the Rare Plant Index. By the way, yes, there is one coming next week. I'm just a little bit behind. Next Friday, you should have the Syngonium Rare Plant Index. But I realized, hey, you can't get these. Well, if someone sold them, then that would be great. There's a huge gap in the market for that, and that's very important. The only place I knew that was doing this kind of thing in the world was NSA Tropicals. I hope I'm not going to get overexposed. The sun's come out, and I haven't calibrated for that. Um, the only place that was doing it was NSA Tropicals, and I thought, okay, that, that's a huge gap. That is a huge gap in the world for people to be selling this. And I really wanted to do it. I had the passion for it. Um, I'd already got a bit of a collection by then. I knew it grew very quickly. I just thought, hey, I'll do it. Why not? And I can almost like tell people about these things along the way and it could be really cool. It could be a really cool harmony of giving people the information and also being able to give people the plants, right? I was thinking very small scale, can I just say. I thought when I opened my business, I would sell, Jesus, five plants a week. I thought it'd be a part-time thing was not ready, was not ready. Um, so that's kind of how it came about. And I thought, okay, I'll do it. Why not? And I remember I wanted to come up with a name for the business, right? 
hilarious. I still laugh about this. And uh, there's a thing, and if, if you're into software engineering or you know a software engineer, you will know about what I'm going to say. And if you're sat at home or your, your partner is a software engineer and you're not, ask them and they'll, they'll probably agree and go, yeah, when you're a software engineer, you are known for being terrible at naming things. It's a thing, right? I'll not elaborate on it. It's a thing. So I thought, okay, well, it sells rare plants. Let's call it the rare plant shop. And I remember I went to Google it. Um, I was talking to somebody at the time and I was like, it's not going to be available, obviously. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it was. No one had done it. And I couldn't believe it when I was sat there that no one had done it. And I was like, well, shit, there it is. There it is. It's a really obvious name. It doesn't have flair. It's very straight to the point, but that's just how I am, right? That's another reason why it's called that. Um, so I made this shop and it was, apart from NSE, one of the first shops to ever do it. And obviously it's different now because everyone's doing it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold a candle to that because I was there when no one else was selling it. And I opened this shop and it, it took a while before other shops started up after that, I think. This year, obviously it's really boomed, or last year, 2020. But before that, it took a long time for other people to start. So mine was going for quite a bit and not many other shops were. And then obviously you had the, the great logo reckoning where now every shop is a clone of mine, essentially. I'm over it. <laughs> Who cares? But that's how I kind of got started. It came out in a really natural way. And if you look back over a lot of my videos, you can hear the things I'm saying. And I remember in episode four of my documentary, I put this little summary together um, near the end of the documentary. You'll know what it is if you've watched it. And it was like a really condensed version. It was like two minutes long of how I got to where I am. And it was hard to condense it but I was listening to the words in these little video clips and you can really see how it's kind of come into be just from watching these clips of my old videos because I'm just sat there saying, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm looking for all these plants and no one seems to sell them online. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you start it? So that was really long winded, but I haven't, I don't think I've really gone into any detail about the shop before. There's the, the logo, but that's, that's a different story altogether. Um, you know what I'm going to tell you anyway. So the logo thing, right? <laughs> People are not going to like me for this. I chose an oblique leaf for the logo and I chose it to be black and white. And I've never told anybody why this reason is, okay? One, yes, I like the style of it, but that actually wasn't the reason why I chose the shop logo, okay? And this is, this is just me to a T. So I noticed that all of the other plant shop logos, because I did do my market research on that. I did market research, but I didn't do a business plan. So I did my market research and I saw that all plant shops that existed were very green, very leafy. There was nearly always, nearly always, there was a Monstera Deliciosa leaf on the logo, right? You were hard pressed to find a shop that didn't have that, right? So I thought, right, well, fuck that. We're going to do it black and white because it's timeless. I like it. It's a little bit more um, classic, I guess. It'll age well. Great, cool. Not only that, but when it goes to print, and yes, I was thinking about it then, when you print it on an invoice, on a sticker, on a t-shirt, on anything, it's going to print well because of the contrast. You can also invert it really well. And I do often with my logos, I invert them. So that was one reason. The reason why... <laughs> I'm smiling. The reason why I chose an oblique leaf as the logo, honestly, it was a fuck you to normal plant shops. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that because I don't want that to come out the wrong way. I'm laughing because people are going to take it the wrong way. I did it as a fuck you to plant shops, meaning all plant shops do the common thing, right? Which is the Monstera Deliciosa leaf. That's what shops do. That's And they were, they were all over every shop. And if you, if you knew about plant shops, maybe two, two years ago, two, three years ago, then you'd know that. But no one was offering the rare stuff, right? So what's the rare version of, a, say, a Deliciosa? Well, the rarest thing at the time, and yes, I know it's, it's changed now, the climate is very different for this plant, but the rare thing at the time was the Monstera Oblique. And I thought about this logo, I thought, right, everyone's doing green, fuck you, I'm doing a black and white. Everyone's doing Monstera Deliciosa leaves, fuck you, I'm going to do an Oblique. And that is how the logo was born. Literally, that's how the logo was born. So I didn't design it down to a T. I did have a designer make the logo for me. I think I've spoke about this before. 
I had them make a logo for me, but I told them what I wanted. So I knew I wanted it black and white. I knew I wanted something that it could be an emblem if you dropped the name, because I love the idea of that. And I wanted an oblique leaf in it. And that's what I knew and that's what I had designed. So there's the history of how I started the shop and the logo. And I've never told anyone about the logo. Ben knows about the logo and my family know why I chose that. And that's why I chose that. It was basically a fuck you in a, in a friendly way to um, other shops doing the common stuff. And that was the entire point of the shop. That's why it's called the Red Plant Shop. And that is why the logo is like that. So there's the true origin of my shop. And to be honest, I mean, I don't recommend anyone go and watch my old videos because they're probably terrible quality. I don't know. Um, but you can kind of see it develop over the course of a few videos, to be totally honest. Um, it's kind of spooky. And a lot of people have said, oh, you should react to one of your old videos. I'm fucking scared, dude. I think I'll cringe. If someone wants me to do that, um, let me know if you want me to react to an old video. Maybe I could do two or three. Um, so if you, if you really want that, maybe drop a request for that and like a couple of videos that you think are really prominent that you think I should react to. And I might try it. I might do it. But I'm just, honestly, I haven't looked at a single old video of mine past, I don't know, late last year. Because I, I don't look back at old content. So once it's like over six months old, I just, I don't look at it. I mean, who does look at their own content? But you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't look back at it in, for any reason, actually. Um, so if you think that would be cool, let me know. And I, I might give it a go. I think I'd be cringing all the way, though. Absolutely cringing all the way. But yeah, a couple of people have suggested I do that. So if you think it would be fun, let's do it. Why not? Why not? Be really interesting. Right, we have some Dark Lords and we have two Jerry Horns left. Fun, fun. Let's get another question. I realize I'm talking like way more than normal in this video, but I don't have a lot to report and it's just putting stuff in Lekka, so it's not, do you know what I mean? It's not that exciting. Um, anyway, let's pick another question. Okay, I'm gonna tackle this one real quick. A ton of people ask me about it. Um, and I think I should answer it on a, on a very basic level. And I explain why I'm going to answer it on a basic level. So the amount of questions or requests I got to talk about the Meghan Markle interview with Oprah was off the chain. And most of you were suggesting it and you were saying, yeah, this is probably off the chain right now, but here's your 50 millionth you know, request to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it briefly because I haven't seen the interview, right? I haven't. So I don't want to misspeak on anything, but... So far, I'll be honest, I think I've heard enough, quite frankly. I think I've heard enough to make a decision, but I haven't heard enough to really speak on it in depth, if that makes any sense. So I'm not going to speak in depth. I'm going to cover it very quickly. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, two minutes. La 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 la. Prince Harry and uh, his wife, Meghan Markle, uh, they left the UK. I actually don't know when they left because I hadn't been following it. I was notoriously, famously very busy last year. I didn't follow it anyway. But they left the UK and they moved to America through uh, reasons that I don't think were that well known. And I think the reason for this Oprah interview that aired a few days ago now was to ascertain the full reasons why they left and the events leading up to them leaving. So the notable things that I got from this interview, I think it was a couple of hours long. Again, I haven't seen it was Meghan Markle said a couple of things. First thing she said was that she was feeling suicidal for, I believe, a prolonged period of time. And she had asked people at the palace, the establishment, I think people refer to it as, uh, for help mentally to cope with the, that's my living wall if you can hear it, that's, I should have turned that off, to cope with the press and the stress of living in that environment because I imagine it's absolutely horrendous personally but she asked for this help and she was essentially denied help on the basis that it wouldn't be a good look for essentially the royal family and I think I heard that she was told she couldn't have the help because she wasn't employed by them or something I don't know um, so there was that and then the other issue that people are talking about is that Meghan Markle said in this interview that before her son Archie was born that a royal family member was concerned, key word here, concerned about the colour of baby Archie's skin 
and how dark his skin was going to be. Um, I think Prince Harry stepped in and said, basically, I want you to know it's not the Queen and her husband. So Britain, as I understand it right now, is in kind of meltdown and for some reason is very divided over this whole thing. We've had a few instances with Piers Morgan storming off TV. Um, and Piers Morgan said that he essentially didn't believe a word that Meghan Markle was saying and she trashed the monarchy and all this stuff. Sorry, I know this is a big expo dump, but anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, now you're kind of filled in. If you just Google it, you'll find a ton on it. Um, I cannot say too much on it because I haven't seen the interview, but what I can tell you is a couple of things. One, I don't tolerate racism. I don't care if it's the royal family. I do not care. Two, if it turns out, and I personally believe Meghan, if it turns out that the royal family is racist in some way, I am unfortunately, and I say that with every fiber of my being, I'm unfortunately not surprised. I am not surprised that that is built on that, right? I'm just not. I'm not happy about it and I don't accept it. I'm just saying I'm not surprised at all, at all. What I do know is as well, the third thing I know is if someone says something has happened to them, or if someone says that they were suffering and they were feeling suicidal, sorry, you believe them. I don't think I need to say anymore. That's my stance. It has to be limited. I haven't seen the interview. Um, I've seen a lot of things third hand, you could say. Um, whether that's on TikTok or it's news articles or clips on YouTube and stuff like that. Or on Twitter, actually. It's definitely got a lot of celebrities talking as well. But as a Brit, that is my opinion. Don't accuse people of lying about their mental health. And I tell you what, this was something that is, it's going around on Twitter and it's going around on my personal Facebook as well. It's really good. And I urge everyone to take this bit of advice. No matter what you think about the situation, there's uh, some, a few people posting this status on Facebook, on Twitter, on whatever. And it basically said, Meghan Markle is never gonna see these statuses you're making saying that you don't believe that she felt suicidal. But your friends probably will. That should tell you, is that a spider? Please don't be a spider. That should tell you everything you need to know. So whether you believe it or not in your own head, fine, honestly, fine, whatever. No one can stop you believing something if you believe in something. But seriously, seriously think about others around you and what seeing things like that come from you could do to them, right? If I'm feeling suicidal or I've felt suicidal and I've struggled with it for months, for example, and I see a really good friend of mine talk about this situation on Facebook and say, wow, it's, you know, that's a lot of shit, whatever, whatever. You know, how could she possibly have any problems? She's royal. I've heard that a lot. Um, please stop and think about how that affects people that you care about. Because you might not care about Megan, but fine, no one can make you care. But I'm sure you care about those around you. So please think about how that would affect somebody else and be very careful. And please don't come at me for saying that I'm censoring things. It's called human decency. It's not called censoring, okay? Please just be careful what you say in front of people because you don't know what other people are going through. And honestly, I don't want people are saying that you can, how could you possibly have problems because you're royal? It's like, I thought money couldn't buy happiness. Is that not what everyone says? So. People sit there all day pitching the idea that money can't buy you happiness, and then when someone is rich and unhappy, they get their back up going, well, I've got everything in the world. I say, well, which one is it, guys? Come on. So I'm not going to drone on about it. I'm already droning on about it. I'm not going to drone on about it. That's my opinion. My opinion is simply, I don't tolerate racism. That's never going to change, ever, on this channel. And if someone says something like that, you believe them. And that's it. That is my little piece on that. Uber. Is there just one meaty one? Oh, okay, there's two. First one, people are asking me a lot, and I'm giggling because I'm not offended, I, I find it quite cute. People are asking me quite heavily all over my Instagram, and I know why you're asking. Uh, you're asking if, I, if I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus community and wh what letter I am, <laughs> essentially. Um, and I guess I haven't told anyone. Um, why not make it fun? Why not make it fun? Um, I'm not gonna tell you what I am. I'm gonna let you guess what I am. Uh, okay, how can I, how can I make a little riddle? 
really quickly on camera. Um, so my favorite season is autumn. And I really like the movie, the number 23. So there you go. Um, not a secret, just not in any rush, I guess. Big supporter of the LGBTQ plus community. That can be a mouthful when you've got Invisalign in. Um, so just for anyone that is watching, I'm anti-racist and I'm anti any hate towards, to be honest, any minority. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, see if you can uh, work out what that means. And I guess answers in the comments, because I'm quite curious. Let me know, let me know. I'm kind of curious, maybe I should have made it harder, I don't know. Anyway, on to the next thing. Right, I've got a good question. And it might be my last question of the day, so I might hurry up a little bit. But I think a shop asked me this question. Two minutes. Probably gonna put more than one in there. That's pathetic, isn't it? Give me a minute. So I got asked a question and it's oh, something I go through every damn day, let me tell you this. Um, I got asked a question by, I believe a shop. I'm gonna assume you're a shop. Maybe you're not a shop, but you're curious. But it's a great question. But I know that a lot of this conversation, shops are really gonna feel me. And maybe customers probably won't. It's just one of those things. Shops will know exactly what I'm talking about when I get going. So someone asked me anyway, um, what was the actual question? So I don't miss, um, misquote them. Plant customers out to scam, how do you deal with it? Right, so I guess what they're saying is how do you deal with difficult customers? Because a lot of people in the community talk about sellers and I get it because most of you are buyers. I understand that, but it goes both ways. And there are a lot of buyers out there that are out to scam and I get them not daily, definitely weekly, definitely every launch, it happens. It just happens. Um, the problem is, two minutes. Is that gonna be deep enough? Yeah, I'll just have to fill it more. The problem with that whole thing is, the reason I don't talk about it is because you can't, right? You can't talk about it. One reason is that you have to be as professional as humanly possible. Yes, everyone will snap at points, that's life. Unfortunately, you always just have to strive to do your best. And I do. I might not always get it right, but I strive to do my best. So that's one reason why you can't just tell everyone about all the, the dickheads, as we say in England, in the, the customer base, I suppose. The average uh, minority customer base that are difficult, shall we say. So that's one reason why you can't talk about it. The other reason you cannot talk about it, and I'm assuming other shops have worked out this. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. You can't talk about it. Because if you talk about different people trying to scam you in certain ways, other people will get that idea and they will try it. And the amount of people trying to essentially fuck you over will go right up. So a lot of people do a lot of things to me on the, on the weekly in terms of customer stuff. A few minutes. But I can't talk about it because literally all the, the nasty people, and let's be honest, there are plenty where I'm concerned, um, they will strive to take that as advice. And then they try and do it more, do it harder to other shops. So the answer in how I deal with it, and I recommend any shop do this unless you know that saying it can't perpetuate it, I suppose, is to not talk about it. I know that is not what you wanted to hear, but if you talk about it, I can't really, I don't even think I can give an example. That's how much we have to protect this kind of stuff. But if you talk about it, now it's a known tactic. Now people can use it. Do you see what I'm saying? It's quite difficult. Um, I mean, I, 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 can t I can talk around the subject, I guess. Um, one thing that is a problem as a shop is that, and I get this a lot because people seem to think that it's okay to just tag me and shit when it has not a lot to do with me personally, but whatever. A lot of people can get quite rowdy on Instagram because they think, and unfortunately this works because shops have to pander to them for damage control. A lot of people go off at shops on Instagram basically insinuating the shop's done something terrible or, you know, something really bad's happened. Um, from my personal experience, I can't speak for everybody, but the amount of times where what they're saying is true might be one in 10, if that, in my experience. I mean, maybe that's just me because I'm a walking target. Fine. I'm fabulous. I'd be, you know, 
I'd be targeting me too if I was a nasty person. Um, but a lot of people kind of go off sometimes on Instagram and they say things and it's like, that ain't happened. Like they, they make it up half the time and I think they're doing it for clout. Maybe that's because it's me. So maybe what I'm saying here is, is quite specific to me because of who I am and they think if they can make up a bit of drama, then they'll gain loads of followers from it. And this doesn't just account for shop stuff if you haven't already worked it out. It accounts for a lot of shit as well. I get a lot of shit and it's normally people doing it for clout, nine times out of 10. Um, the problem is you can't, if a customer trash talks a shop, right? And I can talk about this because this is a problem that I face as well. If a customer trash talks your shop online, you, if you clap back, the amount of people that would say, sorry, I'm probably getting really overexposed. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it right now. The amount of people that will say to you that you are unprofessional if you respond and defend your business is crazy because I think people just want, people just want the shops to be in the wrong a lot of the time. Um, it's the easiest option. Um, it's easy to direct anger towards the shop because shops are seeing as these entities with all these plants that everyone wants and it's just, you know, you've got it all. It, it, it can get like that a little bit sometimes. But the shops can't respond much because everyone will say they're unprofessional, even though people complaining or people scamming or people doing whatever uh, are saying things to other people, I on Instagram, on Facebook, and it's not the full story. Sometimes it's not even the story at all. It like it's so far removed from what happened. It's ridiculous, and it's hard to sit there and watch that. And that happens to me all the time. I watch people make stuff up. I mean, it's it's not that often where people get really vocal. Maybe they maybe they do. They just don't tag me. I don't know. But people get really vocal, um, and they don't actually say the full story. And it's really hard to sup it up and be professional and let them say it, even though these people are saying things that aren't true and they are tarnishing your business because obviously everyone else believes them and you can't offer anything to counteract that, right? It's hard to sit there and do nothing. It's so hard to sit there and do nothing. And people think I clap back at people all the time and I really don't. Honestly, I'm sick of being told that I do that because the amount of crap I do get, the stuff I respond to is not even 1%. It's like... 0.001%, quite honestly. I understand if you're seeing stuff on Instagram, it, it might appear that I'm just responding to everybody. That's really cute that you think that I don't get that much shit, but <laughs> that's not how it is. And I sympathize, I sympathize with all shops because I understand what it's like to be in that position and have people say shit that just ain't true um, and pull some of the stunts that they pull. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you guys what I'm talking about because seriously, me, any other shops watching this or even aren't watching this, the amount of problems they have will go up as a, as a result of me telling you the tricks people pull in plant shops. Seriously, it's that shit. Um, I suspect, and this has definitely increased over the past, uh, definitely this year, this year has gone crazy, but even last year, late last year, people are starting to pull a lot more stunts. And I suspect it's largely to do with the price increase, right? People don't like it. So they'll basically do anything to either get a free plan or a massive discount. And some of the stunts people pull are quite creative. I've got to give it to them. Um, but we can't talk about it because it will perpetuate it. It will genuinely encourage other people to do the same. Um, I wish I could do a video on it, but I never could. And I thought about this the other day and I thought, oh, if I ever leave the industry, could I do a video on it? And then I thought, well, no, because if I do a video on it, it would still perpetuate it. So I still haven't won. So sorry, that's probably not the answer you want. The answer is honestly to not say anything. I guess I've responded to someone very publicly before on a YouTube channel because um, they, they made their issue very public very public, they, they really, they were trying to gain followers and they made it very clear to people that they were trying to gain followers from it. Um, I responded to them publicly on their channel, I think. Don't go looking for anyone, don't give anyone any hate. That is not why I'm saying it. I'm saying that I have done that in case anyone calls me out for that um, because basically the customer in question was just not given the full story and it made me look really a certain way and it really wasn't. And I think I put my side out there and people were like, oh, right, well, you know, um, this has happened many times, but I don't often speak on it. I would only speak on it if someone crossed a huge line and people were like, what really? Uh, or I saw that 
I had a lot of business loss because of what the one individual said, or it would take a lot for me to actually say something. Um, but that's not to say I never would. I think there's a time and a place, and I think it sucks to be a shop. Honestly, it does, because you have to just eat that when you get the shit. And I'm sure plant shops that are watching know the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You just kind of have to eat it and shut up, because the best way forward, I know that's a really shitty answer, but it's the only one I've got. If you know of a better answer, <laughs> let me know. Um, maybe I can't do certain things because of who I am, and I'm following a slightly different set of rules, which pisses me off on the best of times. But yeah, you kind of can't talk about it because it makes it worse. I think if someone does something outwardly really bad, then you have the right as a business owner to defend your business. I think you can do it with dignity and grace, though. I don't think anyone needs to name call and, and be horrible. Um, but it's a tough one, that one. It really is. Because we kind of can't talk about it because more people will do it. And that's sad, but that's just true. I know no one else out there would want to take risks like that. Um, it does happen. It happens a lot. It happens more than any of us are going to admit to you because we don't want to perpetuate it. So, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. People don't necessarily get away with it. I'm not saying that. Um, but, yeah, I'm sorry if that's not the answer you wanted. Um, if you're a shop and you are able to answer in a way that I know what you're talking about, you know what I'm talking about, and you feel the urge to tell me if if you do tend to reply to people, you do call people out, like what are, your, what are the actions you're taking? I'd be really curious to know because I feel like I can't do additional stuff because of my follow account, essentially. So I'd be curious to know how the shops are dealing with this sort of stuff because obviously I'm making generalizations and I'm making a lot of assumptions because I'm in my position. So I'd be really curious to see what other shops think and do. Um, please do not write anything in this video and that goes to customers as well as shops about things people do to get eg a free plant or something like that um whether you're a customer or a shop i prefer if you didn't write that because honestly for the same reason it is perpetuating it and if i see people writing loads of stuff i'm probably going to remove it i don't usually do that but i probably will remove it because i don't want to perpetuate the horribleness that can occur because it's just not fair to shops that have bought in these plants, spent all this time, uh, you know, rehabilitating them, growing them, and then sending them out, shipping them, having them inspected, all the documentation. I've covered that in last week's video. It's not fair to them. Um, it's not fair to private sellers either, by the way. I'm saying shops. This happens to private sellers. I should have covered that. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, don't, you know, come up with a compendium of, of shit that people do um, because I, I, I understand it's raising awareness. But for every positive person that it raises awareness to, it will also raise awareness to a negative person as well. Um, so please refrain from doing that. Um, of course, we can talk about the fact that it happens, but I would prefer if people didn't go into specifics because it's just not fair on the people that provide these services, whether it's a shop, a private seller, anything. It's just not fair. Um, but yeah, I want to touch on that because everybody talks about you know, the bad shop and it, or the, the bad seller. And it's like, well, no, this goes two ways, you know? Um, and we can't necessarily talk about it because we have to be professional and we can't perpetuate it. That's really noisy. That's really noisy. <laughs> I hope that's not really obvious. But anyway, that's me kind of done. I'm sorry that this was very, very chatty. Uh, the lighting is different. I should have tackled that at the beginning. I don't have any soft boxes on. This is just the blinding light of the shop right now. Um, everything's thriving. It's going great. Um, but I've done these props. It's not all of the props I need to do. So I'll probably do some more maybe tomorrow. Um, but that's what we've got. We've got an array of things. They're just in Lekka. Some are sat further down than others. I tend not to plant all the way to the top. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It's not an exact science, quite honestly, to anyone that wants to know. I often put the plant maybe about halfway down rather than two thirds, but I can do that because it's very humid in this environment. So a lot of people suggest to put your plant two thirds of the way down into the lecker. I've stopped doing that because I've raised the humidity in here. So I can get away with these halfway down, no problem. Um, I'm sure a lot of you do that at home, but I'm not ready to do a full video on lecker yet because I'm trying to figure out um, the optimal way of using it. And if say other plants are, it's like some plants are better than others anyway. So I'm gonna wait on that, but. That's basically what's happening with that. And I guess 
that is it for this week's video. Uh, you will get a Replon Index next week. It just takes a little bit of time to edit, and I've been very, very ill this week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to do another one. Let me know any of your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!